Greetings from Wood Turning with Dick. Bit excited. I've got a lovely great lump of pink ivory here. Has got a lot of cracks at the on the end of the grain. Look at that. Mm-hmm. That'll be fun. You can see somebody's actually marked up where they think it should be cut in order to get a good good bowl blank. Now, see that huge crack down here? That runs the entire length. So I think a fusion bowl. Question is, something as pricey and exotic as pink ivory, what do you join it with? I've got woods that are a similar colour. I've got Ligna Vitae. I've got Bog Oak. I've got American Cherry. For one reason or another, I don't want to use those. The Bog Oak would be nice, but it is a completely different texture. So I've got a bit of Now that, a lovely dark brown. There's a bit of wax on that, that's gonna come up really dark. So, I think we lop out a lump in the middle here, insert that, spread that open, make a bowl. That is rather a large chunk to cut out the middle. Fortunately, this stuff's fairly thick. So we're gonna have a couple of pink edges with some nice white sapwood. Now, can I just show you the color of this? Are you ready? Look at that pink. <laughs> oh man. I mean, yes, I know. It won't always be that pink. It'll fade to a more browny color, but just initially, look at it. That's more the sapwood, but oh my Lord, look at that. Glorious stuff. Now that bit's not going in the bin. It's got a, a lot of big cracks for it. I don't know what I'll do yet. I might trim that up to pen blanks, but oh, so pretty. Now, gonna run this through the planer, flatten that, this piece on the sander, and then get them all bonded together. Something like that, bearing in mind I'll lose a bit with the planing and the sanding. Avoid this crack here. Avoid these cracks up here. I've got a couple of small ones here. I think I'll end up with about a 10 inch bowl. Also keen to see what this looks like. Right, let's get these bits run through the planer. Yeah, that bit sanded. Back at you in a minute. Let's run through the planer. All right, that's all nice and dry now. Some overspiller glue just up the sides there. I did make sure that where I cut it down the middle there, that that is all nice and in line so the grain will follow nicely. Next thing, cut the corners off. Easy. Find dead middle. This is actually my top surface, so I'm gonna to need to take that down to flush with that, so that I can get my screw chuck on there. Get that trimmed down, screw chuck in, and we'll go from there. Close enough. Sure is pretty. Right, all I wanna do now, I'm gonna do something quite special with this. It's not gonna be just a standard bowl. So I'm gonna, just gonna round this and, uh, and then flatten the bottom. Then I'll show you or talk to you about what I'm doing next. That is pink. A few touches of brown in it, but the brown kind of goes with that brown. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Look at that sapwood. This is all coming down in a moment, but let me true up the bottom and I'll talk to you some more. Deep crack here, small surface crack here, only goes down another, another 10 mil or so. 
at the deepest point. It's going to have some lovely colour through this. I would say it's a shimmer, but it's not. That surface cracks. So I'm going to take it down another 10 mil, and then I'm going to take a big lump of wood, a ring of wood, out of the end. So watch closely, and you'll see what I'm doing. That is the bulk of the surface cracks. You can see some slight brown lines here, but very, very subtle. Not too important anyway. I'm going to come in so far at this edge, not too much. And then I'm going to take a big chunk of wood out of here from about there. But before I start cutting away and doing that, I'm going to drill thirds, three holes, equal distance. One here. One here-ish, and right, I think I need to get the ruler out. Such a transition of the pink there and taking that middle section out. So pink over here, a lot less pink over here than obviously the sapwood. Oh, I like either pinky. Just before I do my drilling, I'm just gonna clean this side up so that I can rest something under there as support because I'm leaving the chuck on while I put it on the drill stand. There you go, flat surface all round now. I measured to dead middle here, and then measured out and across here, so I've got exactly thirds. I braced it up on the chuck, not too tightly, because I don't want to damage the chuck, obviously. Hang on, I need to do my depth first, don't I? Right, not too near the top, just over a finger. I hope that won't be too close. This isn't something I've done before, it's just an idea I came up with and I love challenging myself to new ideas, new concepts. It may not work, it may not turn out right, the glue joints might split, the holes might not work. It's, but it's fun experimenting. Yes, I'm experimenting with pink ivory, very expensive, but you don't experiment, you don't try these things, you don't know. All right, before I cut any deeper, I'm gonna sand this. I'm gonna finish this this bit here and this bit here. The risk of it coming off as I'm cutting it off and actually damaging it on the extension bar here is quite high. But Salavi, fingers crossed for me in a minute. But I'm gonna sand. I'll come back to you in a second. Yeah, sand the sealer applied and denibbed. Lovely pink. I just can't get over how nice that pink is and that white. It's got a lovely shimmer in this wood as well. But now. Gonna pot it off. I am wondering, so it flying off. I pop these dowels in. Will that help my cause? Dunno. I think it's worth a shot. It's gonna be a new tool Saturday shortly. Gonna get a new toy. I think I'm through. And the dowels did save it. Look at that. Now I can finally get to shaping the rest of it. That's got some wonderful colours going on. Once that's sanded and done, it's going to be lovely. A lot of tear out, but it does come out very easily with the sandpaper. I'm not actually going to sand it now because I've still got alterations to do to the base there. I'm going to turn it around, hollow it out, and then I can sand it once I've hollowed the inside out. I can sand this side and this side and do my decoration on the rim. So, yeah, turn it around. I love the turning, hate the sanding. But of the turning, I think the hollowing is my favourite. It's 
It's a shame about this big old crack here, but there's nothing I can do about it. I've already put a little bit of super glue in there with some dust, but it's just gone black. It's going to have to live with that, I'm afraid. Once both those sides are sanded, that line will be even thinner. And hopefully, won't break in my new button chuck. As I said, that, uh, that crack is glued. It's solid. Can't feel any lines there. Let's get some sanding done. And I'll come back to you when I'm sander sealing that inside. Because that will be pretty. Now that's sanded 400 grit. I'll denib it. Denib the Santa sealer afterwards. As I say, I'm fortunate about this black crack here, but yeah, part of the wood, part of the joys of working with wood. The occasional crack you can do nothing about. Got myself a new toy. Got a nice set of 16 inch button jaws. And of course, I had to get the chuck to go with it. SK100. That's the one that fits this lathe. I popped the dowels some spare dowels back in these they might not do anything but i thought i'd give them a try just to stop any tear out from the holes as i come down i'm just gonna flatten that slightly because it's a little bit off ski and get rid of some of this tear out at the top Just had to push it that little bit further, didn't I? <sighs> now, if you can see that, but it's torn out of the bottom there. <sighs> Frustrating. Okay, so just before I bin this project, or bin this element of it, I'm going to give it one last try. I'm going to use a parting tool this time rather than a skew chisel. And I'm going to come down this side, which ruins a lot of the strength of it. And it means I'm going to have the, the dowels that are going to be holding the top piece up sticking into the middle. Which I might be able to come back later. But let's have a go with the parting tool. Well, let's taken the, taken the drill hole off this outside edge, which didn't necessarily need or want. It's got a lot smaller. There's a bit of MDF on the back there. It's only, I don't know, 5mm, 4mm thick, just to stop me damaging my button chuck. Might yet work. Fingers crossed for me, please. And there's my base. All this outside edge nicely finished. Got a lovely shimmer in this pink ivy. But look at that sapwood. That lovely brown line there is quite lovely. And this is just immaculate. Should be quite the piece when it's finished. And you can see there, the ends of my holes. Just big enough to pop me 10 mil pegs, if you want to call them that. Legs? Legs. Let's call them legs. I hold it out and I've got a good gauge of where I'm going with this. All I need to do is bring this down and rather than bend here at the corner, it's got to come down and come to a spike. So, wish me luck. I move the, move the rest quite a lot as I, as I go closer to it. That'll do. I'll get the rest of that with sandpaper. Yep. Like the curve. Not quite to a spike yet, but that, again, that will come with the sandpaper as that wood comes down. Yeah, finish that to a nice nipple. Throw a bit of wax on there now. I've sanded sealed it. I've sanded it. Did a very final sanding at 600 grit with the grain of the wood. Get rid of any little sanding lines. Not that it matters too much because it's the underneath, but as I say, always like to finish my things. 
everywhere perfectly. My original idea for this was to have the feet coming down, it holding on, and it holding on with the triangle facing upwards. Which, and, and was it about this sort of distance away? But actually, I turned that upside down. Because look how that mimics that so much nicer. So I think I have that triangle facing downwards. Yep, that works on quite a few levels. I need the legs. Now you remember this bit with all the cracks and splits on one end. There's a insect hole there. There's a nice big crack here. That appears only to be fairly surface deep. And I need three fairly sizable blanks. So I'm gonna cut down the crack on this side, put, cut it into fours and see what I've got inside. A lot of surface cracks on the inside top there. Not a perfect four, but it will do. There you go. Three of them are exactly the same length. Now I've got to make three exactly the same. Now my plan is to have a little triangle at the bottom, slowly petering up to about here. I want the rest of this 10 mil. And then the ring I'll have in about here and the feet sticking out the bottom. Yeah, that'll look quite smart. Carolina, what the hell? Sanded 400 grit. Nice. Uh, turn the bugger. I've measured that very carefully. And that is 10 mil there and around here, which is just where I want it. I'll denib that in a minute and then part it off. And then all I need to do is make two more exactly the same. Seriously strong. Wow. So I'm thinking about that sort of height and you see the grain pattern in these. I have that the same facing out, just a bit of uniformity to it. I like that. I like a bit of uniformity. And then just a very small dab of glue on the stem. Clean that up with a tissue in a minute wet tissue get rid of any excess glue but i need to clamp that put the glue all in first a small dollop of glue on each of those one at a time so i don't get any glue on the bottom of the bowl Oof, can't see me hell one two Three. Ah, I just put my arm in all the glue. Damn it. Once that glue's dried, I'll tidy up the rest of the glue underneath. Give it about half an hour, and then I'll wipe any excess glue off with a wet rag. And then I think it's off to the gilder.